we go over there? Where do we have to go? It can't be far. Damn it, we need to get out before we end up like everyone else. Give us cover. We're almost there. I'm so sorry about what happened to your friend. What the hell? Who are these people? What do they want? They are searching for this chamber. What? Why? There's nothing here. On the contrary. Everything is here. We stand before a gateway. Behind which the greatest treasure of all mankind is concealed. What do you mean? This monastery guards a secret that is centuries old. But the world is not yet prepared for its revelation. I tell you this only because you will shortly become the last person who can prevent the key to the secret from falling into the hands of those barbarians. What is that? This is a key. At some point, they will find this chamber and break down the door. The key must no longer be here when that happens. Take it, use it, and get it to the other side. Then you will understand everything. <laughs> we just wanted to help. Now I'm the last one left alive, and I don't even know who's trying to kill me. Or for that matter, why? Ancient secrets, apparently. A great treasure hidden here in this chamber. Maybe that's what they're after. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I need to get out and get in touch with England. Nothing more I can do. I need to use this key and get out. Now. Dead. The monks gave their lives to protect the artifact and this chamber. He spoke of a great treasure. Sounds like we know why they came under attack. It won't budge. The there's a recess in this plinth here, but nothing else interesting. A great many strange symbols, not one of which I understand even remotely. I've never seen writing like that before. It could say anything, maybe something useful. But I don't speak the language. I've never seen writing like that before. It could say anything. Maybe something useful. But I don't speak the language. I've never seen writing like that before. 
From what I know of Asian mythology, dragons are often guardians of doors and gates. Is this the gate the monk was talking about? I can't see any way to get it open. I can't see how to open this thing. If, that is, it can even be opened. into the recess here. I haven't the slightest idea what that might do, but according to the monk, it's the only way out of here. I hope he was right. Lieutenant? How are things progressing? All resistance has been quashed. The monastery is under our control. And the chamber? Uh, we haven't found it yet. There must be a secret passage. That is how the monk and the Tommy got out. At least, that is what our prisoner claims. And has he told us in the meantime what his unit was doing here? Yes, he was most talkative. They were here to map the region. Apparently, his lieutenant was using maps made by some Hong Kong cartographer who came this way before. Aha. Uh -huh. Coincidence is a strange thing. Well, we managed to contain things this time, but I don't want any further interruptions. We will extend our patrols, and I have ordered that the airspace be monitored by our fighters. You are a soldier. You're happy to wait and fight. I, on the other hand, am a scientist, and I believe in preventing the fight in the first place. Send someone to Hong Kong immediately. Eliminate the cartographer once and for all, and destroy any records he may have. If needs be, pay some triads from Hong Kong to take care of the job. We need to deal with this quickly. We must do everything possible to prevent anyone from turning up here again and interrupting the operation. This mission is too significant, and we have just about reached our goal, Lieutenant. The future of the Third Reich is in our hands. Business, Shen. Can't complain? How about you? <laughs> Still moving stuff you shouldn't be. Have you ever tried turning a profit the honest way? It's tough. I've got bills to pay. Besides, snatching a deal from the tongs is all the fun I get around here. Fenton, Fenton. The tongs are not to be played with. These are serious people. <laughs> Shen, I didn't know you cared. I'd be surprised if Tong even knew who I was. Oh, really? He was here looking for you last night. 
Finally, the celebrity status I've always craved. You need to relax, old friend. Phantom, you are my best customer, and for that reason alone, I am going to give you some good advice. Watch yourself, or you'll be at the bottom of the harbor before I can say rum. And you can say rum pretty damn quickly. Not as quickly as you can drink it. Didn't you learn in the forces not to underestimate your enemies? Christ, you make it sound like we're in a fight to the death. That may yet prove to be the case. I strongly suggest you forget smuggling and get your kicks elsewhere. Okay, okay, I'll be careful. Promise. Speaking of getting my kicks, you guys have a new singer. Yes, but you're not getting your kicks with her either. She's not into men like you. A lot of guys have tried, a lot of guys have failed. Shen, that sounds like a challenge. I'll spring you my best whiskey if you get so much as a room number. Shen, I'll be back in two minutes. You'd better get down to the basement and dig out that bottle. Piece of cake. In two minutes flat, not only will I have a hot date, but an excellent bottle of whiskey to go with it. Life is sweet. Wow. I'm looking at that dress, wondering if it's the feathers that make the bird, or the other way around. Either way, you look hot. I'll take that as a compliment, even if it's a dubious one. <laughs> that was not my intention. Please forgive me. However, you're certainly a talented singer. Yes, that's why they pay me. Please leave me alone. Wow, this girl is a real challenge. Well, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be intrusive. Overwhelmed by your magnificence, perhaps I came across a bit foolish. Let's have another crack at this, shall we? Your song has moved me in a way I barely thought possible. The least I can do is buy you a drink. Nice try, but I don't drink. Thanks. If the other guys are so easily put off, no wonder you've been waiting for me to come along. Come on, what can I get you? <laughs> Okay, I do enjoy a glass of champagne after a show. You're more than welcome to buy me one, but I intend to enjoy it in my room, alone. Ah, oh, go on. Give me one more chance. Changed your mind yet? The barman, Shen, he's a good friend of mine. I'll have him serve a glass of the best champagne this place has to offer. And I'm sure the two of you will enjoy it very much. Well, if I'm honest, this whole thing's been a massive crash and burn. Ah, well, I'm out of her league anyway. These guys are with the tongs. Looks like Shen was right. They must have found out that I snatched that last deal off of them. One on one I can handle. Two on ones pushing it. And knowing my luck, there's about 20 more of them waiting outside. I think a tactical retreat is in order. I wouldn't like to say a hasty one, but that's exactly what I mean. No one miss this stuff. I'd better leave the walk where it is. An empty walk. I could rail it across the room, but it's not the sort of explosive distraction that'll get me out of here unnoticed. A serving cart. Light the absinthe in the bottle. I'm not so sure about that. 
Okay, let's get the absinthe into the wok. Why should I light the cork? Why plug an empty bottle? Plat de jour, flambe. How would you like that cooked? Well done. Mais ce dénouement. And other bad puns. Now we're talking. Sending a burning card careening across the room while sneaking out of the door. That's how Fenton Paddock rolls. Dead end, Paddock. My answer makes no difference anyway. You're still gonna beat me up, aren't you? Right, kid. <gasps> this time you're messing with the wrong people. Wake up, Paddock, or you will miss your last flight. Ever done a splash down? I'll laugh later. Now let me out. You don't get it, do you? You know what? I think I literally just got it just now. I'm thinking the whole business expansion thing wasn't such a good idea after all. Indeed. But we have run out of patience. You should have kept out of our business. But you just wouldn't heed our warnings. Hey guys, why don't we just relax and talk about this? I promise I won't get in your way anymore, okay? Too late, Paddock. And once again, we find truth in an old Chinese saying. It is easy to open a business, but it is difficult to keep it running. <laughs> but we don't want to be that heartless. We won't grant you a last wish, but you may decide how you would like to die. Would you prefer to suffocate or drown? You don't have to decide right away, Paddock. Let me explain. Strictly speaking, your little submarine here is completely watertight. So when we throw you into the harbor in a minute, not a single drop of water will make its way inside. You'll then have about 15 minutes of air. An agonizing amount of time when you're waiting for death. Only fear and panic will accompany you during your final struggle. I wouldn't even wish that on your worst enemy. Therefore, we have drilled a hole in the lid for you. At first, you will instinctively try to plug the hole with your hand. But if you desist, you can end your suffering that much faster. Let the water flow in and everything will be over in one, maybe two minutes. No. Do not thank us, old friend. I think we owe you that much. I agree. Bon voyage, old friend. He won't be causing us any more trouble. Crap. 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 I need a solution. Quick. Crap. The cork's a tad too small to seal the hole airtight. I don't think it's a particularly smart idea to stare at the hole right now, but while we're at it, it's about three to four centimeters in diameter. If only it were that easy. The lid's nailed shut. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. 
They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. It's hardened. I'm not going to get it off like this. There's a big lump of tar here. The tar's hardened. I can't get it off like that. Put down the lighter for a moment. It worked. The gooey tar is now sticking to the cork. Perfect. The tarred cork sealed the hole. I can take my hand away now. It's screwed to the lid of the chest. screwed to the lid of the chest. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. The cork sealed the hole. Now I can finally use my hand again. If only it were that easy. The lid's nailed shut. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. screwed to the lid of the chest. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. If only it were that easy. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. It's screwed to the lid of 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 the chest. A hinge. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. A hinge. Looks like the tongs used an old door as a lid for the chest. It's screwed to the lid of the chest. It's screwed to the lid of the chest. You have started the assistant. Here you can find information. You can always check to see what. But don't worry. This in. I better not do that. The cork sealed the hole. Now I can finally use my hand again. I've had this lighter since my days in the army.
They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. It's screwed to the lid of the chest. Let's see if there's anything useful inside. Okay, that should work. If only it were that easy. The lid's nailed shut. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. They've sealed the cracks in this crate with tar. If I manage to put the hinge between the lid and the crate, I might be able to pry it open. Let's try. Day to watch the show. Usually a time like this is a time for cautious celebration, followed by raucous celebration. Unfortunately, wandering back into triad territory for a drink with Shen is most likely inadvisable. Plus, I'm soaked. Home time, I think. Are you Tong? Moon Tong? How dare you, stranger? What do you want? Can we go somewhere and talk undisturbed, Mr. Tong? Somewhere less lively? We have nothing to fear here. This is our district. If you have something to say, say it. If not, get out of here. Very well. I need some men to do a job for me. Discreetly and efficiently. I was told you would be able to help me. Interesting. We shall see whether I can or cannot once you've told me what this is about. My clients are looking for a man who is supposed to be living here in Hong Kong. He's in possession of something that my clients desire for themselves. And who are your clients? That is not important. Find the person and retrieve the item. That's the job. Well, many people live in Hong Kong, and I'm sure a lot of them are in possession of things that other people want. If you accept this job, you will of course receive more detailed information. Hmm, this sort of work doesn't come cheap, you understand. Money is no issue. My clients have the necessary means. All that matters is that the job is completed to our satisfaction. Then I'd say it's a deal. That's a 1928 Ford Trimotor. More importantly, it's my 1928 Ford Trimotor. They only build 199, and mine's the best of the bunch. State of the art. Ten years ago. Gus, my mechanic. He keeps things from falling apart. He's also my only employee. Hello, Gus. I'm back. Just look at you. Did you forget your umbrella? Nope, I was out swimming. On that topic, a nice bath wouldn't hurt you either. Women like the smell of hard, honest work. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a man work harder or more selflessly. Hey, 
I'm the best of the best. Oh, save it. You just make sure the engine starts running again. No problem, boss. By the way, there's an officer waiting for you in... the office. An officer? Did he say what he wanted? No, but he said he wanted to wait and speak to you in person. That doesn't sound good. It's just not my day today. Ah, Paddock. You're finally here. Huxley. This is a pretty miserable place to live, Paddock. Shouldn't war heroes be spending their retirement in more comfortable surroundings? Oh, I forgot. You were dishonorably discharged. Thanks for the reminder. What are you doing here? The governor ordered me to find you. It wasn't so easy, since I hadn't the slightest idea how deep in the gutter I'd have to dig. You certainly smell like you belong here. Well, you of all people should know your way around the gutter, Huxley. Watch your mouth. Paddock. There may come a time when the governor won't be there to protect you and I'll be able to drag you to the penitentiary where you belong. Oh, spare me. I'm a civilian now. Deal with it. I was court-martialed and have received my deserved punishment. So leave Lord Weston out of this. You are responsible for the most severe riots in the history of this colony. The Empire conceded a lot in order to regain control. In disobeying your orders, you caused damage that we still feel the consequences of today. The Chai Wang Penitentiary would be a more appropriate punishment, if you ask me. Just let me know when you're done complaining, so I can tune back in. Lord Weston wishes to speak to you immediately. Make sure you get rid of that awful stench. I'll wait in the car. Hmm. What would the governor want? If he sent none other than his adjutant to look for me, it must be important. Better not keep him waiting. Lord Weston's always been good to me. I owe him a lot. Fenton, I'm glad to see you. I hope you'll forgive the short notice. Lord Weston, please, I'm honored. You have, however, piqued my interest. What's so urgent? Need a first-class flight to London? I'm afraid not, Fenton. I am in a somewhat awkward situation, and I think you might be able to help me. You are, in fact, my only hope. Sounds dramatic. Tell me more. The situation is as follows. As you know, the Chinese have been threatening to annex Tibet for years. I'm broadly familiar, yes. Well, the Empire's official position is not to get involved should a conflict arise. And what exactly is the Empire's unofficial position, Governor? Come, Fenton. One should be prepared for all eventualities. I see. Military intervention? No, no, certainly not. We simply wish to be prepared in the unlikely event that a military conflict arise and that is why we need to know the lay of the land. No maps of Tibet are currently available. It is, officially, completely uncharted. And what does all this have to do with me? I'm not much of a cartographer. You have enough of your own. Quite right, Fenton. We have, in fact, already sent out an expedition. Entirely off the record, you understand? The Chinese must be kept in the dark. The last thing we need right now are diplomatic complications. The problem is, the expedition disappeared without a trace a few days ago. We haven't the slightest idea what their status might be. You've sent a rescue party? Two. Both returned. Empty-handed. No trace of them. Not a clue. So now what? I can no longer rely on military options. Eventually, the Chinese will get wind of the situation. The matter must be handled with discretion. Fenton, I want you to find our men. Well, I'm certainly flattered. But what makes you think I'd do the job any better? You said yourself, you've got no maps. And I'm far from a local expert. Come, Fenton, you had quite the reputation. 
You've completed, successfully, numerous missions of this nature. I, for one, have the greatest confidence in you. Honored, I'm sure, Lord Weston. But like you said, I had a reputation. I don't regret my time with the forces, but those days are over now. When they needed a scapegoat for the winter riots, I stood my ground, dishonorably discharged. So tell me, why should I lift so much as a finger for the Empire now? I realize that, Fenton, and I predicted this response. But you should know, this is about the people, not just the army. With all due respect, sir, appealing to my sense of compassion won't work. Oh, stop being so hard on me. You'll get all the financial support you need, and perhaps I can assist you in settling your little difficulties with the local competition. Tempting, but no thanks, Governor. Any other matter, I'd be happy to help. But there's a file in my life labeled Army, and it's closed. But what if the situation weren't so cut and dried? Enlighten me. Richard, Fenton. Richard was the expedition leader. Richard? You wait till now to tell me that! Fenton, I am the governor, and Richard is an officer. That he is my son shouldn't affect the performance of my duties. That may well be, but it can damn well affect mine. You know how close Richard and I were at the Academy. I have a right to know what's going on, don't you agree? You are right. I know how much Richard means to you. How couldn't I? After everything you've been through. Good. So tell me what I need to know. I'm leaving now. You'll find all the information I've been able to collect in this dossier. Thank you, Fenton. I will never forget what you've done for me. Thank me when I found him. Taxi! Richard, what have you got yourself into? I've known you for most of my life, and I've never seen the old man so worried about you. I can understand why as well. No contact for over ten days. Disappeared without a trace 400 miles east of Lassa in a completely unexplored region the size of England. What the hell happened? Avalanche? Snowstorm? That part of Tibet may as well be the end of the world. I need to stay focused. Stay rational, no matter how hard it is. Can't let my feelings get the better of me. First off, I need some local maps. Unfortunately, the region's never been officially charted. I need Gus to start working double time on the plane so I can get going. Maybe he can find me some maps as well. Might be he knows some pilots who have been out that far. It seems like before they disappeared, they were traveling through a region in the Himalayas about 400 miles east of Lhasa, which, of course, is the least explored region in all of Tibet. Without any official maps, I'm going to need some help from somewhere. It seems like before they disappeared, Documents from Lord Weston. There's information here about Richard's expedition, but it's not an awful lot of good to me right now. We Gus uses the bellows to clean the dust out of the engine. Or so he claims. Maybe I should ask Gus if he needs them first. Gus, listen. Yes? Do you think you could spare your bellows for a while? Why do you ask? What do you need them for? Well, I can't really say at the moment. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, go ahead. It's your stuff anyway. I've finished cleaning the engine. Well then. That's a 1928 four. The safe was already here when I moved in. I just use it for old documents and what have you. Freight documents and other old files. Not much use. I've had this old thing for years. It's been halfway around the world with me.
Hmm, I've heard that somewhere before. Doesn't sound so bad. A photo of my mum. She died last year. She looks happy. But since Dad died, she was never quite the same. I suppose that's why she wasn't so keen on my career path. Oh well, it's in the past now. Without Mum on the scene, I've got nothing tying me to England anymore. Which is probably why I'm still wasting my life here smuggling and boozing. Not in that order. My hammock. If it could talk, it'd have tons of stories to tell. Mostly about how I come home drunk, go to sleep and wake up on the floor. I need to rescue my best friend from unknown dangers in uncharted Tibet. A nap would be nice, but somewhat irresponsible. In inches on one side, centimeters on the other. A real all-rounder. Who knows what that might come in handy for? Something, I'm sure. My only photo of my old man. He died in Flanders during the Great War in 1917. I can't remember the last time I set it. I wonder if it even works. I rarely use it anyway. Crap. Lucky everything in there is useless, because the doors are rusted shut. Richard, me, and the rest of our graduation class from Sandhurst. That was in 1927. We were deployed to Hong Kong after military academy. Seems like it was only yesterday. Kind of wish it was. My bathroom. Okay, I admit, it's not exactly a room. Wait. Hey, Gus, listen, we're going to have to cancel all upcoming jobs. What's wrong, boss? Are you in some kind of trouble? You could say so. I'm going to Tibet. Tibet? What do you want to do in Tibet? Don't take this personally, but I can't talk about it. Actually, you're not even supposed to know I'm flying. Aha, uh -huh. well, if it's none of my business in the first place, I'll just carry on slaving away like nothing happened. I told you, it's nothing personal. I need some maps of Tibet. Maybe you can help me. I realize it's pretty much unexplored, but there must be something out there I can use. Do you know anyone who knows his way around the country? Hmm. Most pilots around here head south. You could try old Wang. Hey, yeah, he mentioned it once or twice. Once or twice? He never stops talking about his time over there. And he reckons he's mapped a great chunk of the place. Hmm. Can't you think of anyone else? Oh, yeah, of course. I know hundreds of people with maps of Tibet just lying around at home. What's the matter with you? 
Still having a hissy fit over that fight you two had? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't have a clue what went down with you two, or why Yen quit working here all of a sudden. Nobody tells me anything. But if your quest is so important, I suppose you'll just have to talk to him. Okay, okay. I guess I don't have much choice. Exactly. So, you two haven't seen each other since then? No. And his little niece, uh, what's her name again? Kim. Oh yes, Kim. So, you aren't in touch with her either? No. Why, should I be? Well, I just had an inkling. You spent all that time over there when you were younger. You are practically part of the family. And, well, are you saying she wasn't your type? Nonsense. No idea what she's been up to. You know anything new? Well, I did run into Wang at the club. Talked about the old days a bit. I think he misses flying, but he'd never admit it. He's retired now. He still lives in that old house on Victoria Road. He moved. Don't ask me where to. He never said and I never asked. Great. And how am I supposed to find him? Maybe Shen in the bar can help you out. He makes it his business to know about the punters. Good idea. I'll drop by to see him. How's the engine coming along? I'm almost finished, but there's four screws left over, which is a bit strange. But I'll find some way to put them. I hope you're joking. When you're finished, bring my equipment on board and get that bird ready to fly. I want to leave for Tibet tonight. Aye, sir. That's all for now, Gus. See you later. See you later, boss. I have to be careful. I'd like to avoid meeting the triads again. I'd better make sure the coast is clear. men. I should have figured they'd still be hanging around this place. My alarm clock wound down a while ago. Let's take a look. Ah, the key's stuck to the back. My old alarm clock. It stopped a while back. It, it, it's the key for winding up my alarm clock. Okay, I'll wind up the clock. Running like... clockwork. It'll go off in a couple of minutes. W working again. I'm no great fan of the racket, but it's set to go off in a couple of minutes. measuring tape. Working again. I'm no great fan of the racket, but it's set to go off in a couple of minutes. Okay, Tom and his men are hanging around outside the club, so there's at least a slim chance there's no one inside. Good enough for me. I'd better ask Shen for Yen Wang's address. Rubbish. I don't want to rummage through the rubbish, and I don't have to either. Rubbish. One of the guests. He's on the rice wine. Quite a lot of it, I'd say. 
I'm a friendly guy, but I've got a job to do. I think I'll leave random strangers to their thoughts. That's Shen. He and I have had a nice customer bartender relationship for years. By which I mean, he gets me drunk. Hello, Shen. I thought they already caught you. They did. Can you believe it? They actually tried to drown me in the harbor. I thought that was just something they said to scare people. Why am I not surprised? I know, I know. And, nevertheless, your best customer stands before you in the finest physical condition. You're really asking for it, aren't you? They're still keeping an eye on the front door. I've noticed. But I need your help, Shen. Tell me, what's going on? Do you happen to remember my old friend Wang? He used to work for me. Yen Huan? Of course I remember him. Word has it he moved. Do you know where he lives now? No idea. Sorry. Damn it. Everybody knows Wang. Nobody knows where he lives. Wait, if you're lucky, Nian Su might be able to help. He's not the youngest or the most switched on anymore, but they say he knows half of Hong Kong. And where can I find this Nian Su? Sitting at the table over there, he's on the rice wine. Thanks for not snitching on me to Mang Tong. Like I said, I'd hate to lose my best customer. See you later, Shen. Yes, good luck. Old Niansu. Word has it he knows everyone around here. Excuse me. May I disturb you for a moment? What do you want, young friend? Ah, wait. Aren't you the pilot, uh, Pelak, uh, Parak, uh... Paddock. Fenton Paddock. Yes, that's what I said. So the barkeeper said you know half of Hong Kong. So far, that's holding true. He says that, does he? Well, maybe. I'm looking for a friend who used to live in this district a couple of years ago. He's called Yen Wang. Unfortunately, we lost touch, and now I urgently need his help. Have you heard of him? Maybe you know where I can find him. Um, what was he called again? Wang. Yen Wang. Wang. Hmm. Wang. Ah, well, son, I am not so good with names anymore. He lived in this district, you say? Yes, two years ago. He was a cartographer. Hmm. A cartographer. I am not sure. Pity. I hoped. Easy. Easy. Names are for tombstones. But I never forget a face. What does he look like? Do you have a picture of him? Show me his photo, and maybe I can help. A photo? All right. Wait for me here. I think I have a photo of Wang somewhere in the office. Is it just Hong Kong you're the expert on, or do you also happen to be acquainted with other distant regions? Like, I don't know, Tibet, for example? Are you making fun of me, son? Not at all, sir. I'm trying to collect as much information on Tibet as possible. And you seemed like a well-traveled man. <laughs> I have never left Hong Kong for a day in my life. And to be honest, I have no intention of doing so. Traveling always leads to trouble. You get where you're going, but you cannot find what you're looking for. Seems it's somewhere else now. So you go there, but there's a problem. Then, while you're off in the back end of nowhere, everything explodes back home. If you ask me, you're better off not going anywhere. You don't find trouble if you don't look for it. Sage advice. What if I like trouble? Ah, then forget what I said. Every man must learn for himself. You really need a photo to recognize this guy. That's what I said. Bring me his photo and I will help you. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. See you later.
Okay, now where might I have a photo of Yen Wang? A photo of the delectable Nancy Carroll. What can I say? I saw her in the cinema once, and I've been a fan ever since. A genuine talent. The fact that it's hanging in my bunk is a mere coincidence. Richard, me, and the rest of our graduation class from Sandhurst. That was in 1927. We were deployed to Hong Kong after military academy. Hmm. I keep the old personnel files in the safe. There might still be a photo of Yen Wang in there. There might actually be a photo of Yen Wang in his personnel file in the safe. You'd think I'd know the code, right? Well, I hardly ever use this old thing, so I don't. It's on a note in my wallet. Hey, what? Where? My wallet's gone. Damn it. I must have lost it in the harbour. I suppose I better go back there, if I'm lucky. I might be able to fish my wallet out of the water without running into Tong and his men. Whoa, a wallet! Happy days! Hey, that's my wallet that kid fished out of the water. Wait a second, kiddo. That's not public property. It's mine. What? Yeah, right. Anyone could say that. How stupid do you think I am, big guy? No, honestly. It really is my wallet. So? So? So I want it back. But I found it. And how am I supposed to know it's really yours? My word is my bond. Now hand it over. No. And if you take it away from me, I start screaming. Go on, then. Scream yourself hoarse. Hmm. Those triad types might still be hanging around. Maybe I'm better off without unnecessary attention. Okay, kid. Look, that wallet is very important to me. I really need it back. Not my problem. Cheeky little bastard. Fine. He's only a kid. I can play along. Will you tell me your name? Only if you tell me yours. Well, I'm Fenton. I'm Hal. Okay, Hal. Do you want a reward for finding my wallet? You can have all the coins that are in it. No. Then what do you want? Help me catch a bat. Come again? Catch a bat? Yes! You're fishing... for bats? Don't be stupid. I'm only killing time until the bats come out. There are tons of them over there in the warehouse. And you want a bat because... I bet my friends I could catch one. But you can't. Sure I can. Well, usually, but it's raining today. So? You don't know much about bats, do you? The rain drives away the insects. And if there aren't any insects around, then there's nothing for the bats to eat. And if there's nothing to eat, the bats won't come out. All right. No, it's not all right. If I don't catch a bat, they'll think I lied. And that's why you'll keep that big mouth of yours shut next time. And this is the persuasive charm you use on people when they've got something you want? Fine. I'll get you your bat. You give me my wallet. Sure. It's a deal. Fine. If I want my wallet back, I guess I need... A bat. How's my wallet? It's in good hands. I give it back to you when you lure out the bats. I'll be off then. It'll stay nice and dry over there under the umbrella. I'm not going to take that lamp away from the boy. At least the kid won't get wet under the umbrella. I suppose he still needs it. But I guess I'd better help him if I want my wallet back. All right, kid. Hey! So, got me a bet up your sleeve? I'm working on it. I'll be off then. They don't look very inviting. They don't look very they don't look very inviting.
Gus's bellows. He says he uses them to get the dust out of the plane's engine. But I can't say I've ever noticed a difference. They don't look very inviting. They don't look very inviting. They don't look very inviting. Working again. I'm no great fan of the racket, but it's set to go off in a couple of minutes. They don't look very inviting. I don't really want to turn out the light. It'll stay nice and dry over there under the umbrella. Blackmailing children? What is the world coming to? But I guess I'd better help him if I want my wallet back. Blackmailing children? What is the world coming to? But I guess I'd better help him if I want my wallet back. Blackmailing children? But I... All right, kid. Hey! So, got me a bet up your sleeve? I'm working on it. What was it again about bats? They hate the rain. Oh, man, weren't you listening? The bats don't mind a little bit of rain, but the flies do. And where there are no flies to hunt, there are no bats. You follow? Wouldn't it be better if you try again tomorrow evening? Perhaps you know when it's not raining. <sighs> I bet I catch up at tonight, not tomorrow. Maybe the rain will stop. I see. Hope springs eternal. Very well. I'll come up with something. Maybe I can find a way to attract the bats. When I do, I want my wallet back. Deal! I'll be off then. It'll stay nice and dry over there under the umbrella. I'm not going to take that lamp away from the boy. Dirty flies. They must like this dry patch under the roof. What was that? Just a magic cat. That was close. I shouldn't make so much noise.
cat. I'm going to wring this Moggy's neck in a minute. Of course, I'd probably better nod. Not only am I a great animal lover, but more importantly, the racket might attract Tong's thugs. Dirty flies. They must like this dry patch under the roof. I shouldn't get too close to that cat. If it starts making a racket again, Triad will come flying around the corner. I need to lure it away somehow. What is it that cats like playing with? A measuring tape. I don't think Shen can help me right now. Rubbish. I don't want to rummage through the rubbish, and I don't have to either. A, a thin wooden rod. I need to avoid making too much noise. Don't need those goons to turn up. That definitely means avoiding breaking large wooden rods. I don't want to rummage through the rubbish, and I don't have to either. I'm going to wring this Moggy's neck in a minute. Of course, I'd probably better nod. Right, kid. Hey! So, got me a bet up your sleeve? I'm working on it. I'll be off then. A tree cut precisely to shape. Typical British approach. We even impose our formalities on nature. Wait a moment. Is that a ball hanging in the branches? There's a ball hanging in the tree. Hold! Stop! Stay where you are, sir! What do you think you're doing? I, uh, want to get that ball over there. My, uh, nephew accidentally threw it into the tree while he was playing this morning. I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot allow you to do that. What? I just want to go get my nephew's toy. That may very well be, and usually it wouldn't be a problem, sir. But today it's been raining, and you are just about to step on this decorative English lawn. So what? So what? Excuse me, but have you taken leave of your senses, sir? 
The constant rain has soaked the ground completely and the precious blades of grass are defenceless against your brutal boots. OK, then. I'll be very careful when I walk across the lawn. I promise. Halt! If you take even one more step towards the border, I will have to arrest you, sir. Now wait just a minute. There's a million different crimes going on right now in this city. Your lawn will be just fine. Sir, I do not joke. When it comes to the protection and care of His Majesty's parks, I have full authority. After all, we represent the British Crown here. What is to become of the Empire if we are not even capable of establishing well-tended gardens in our colonies? Sir, you are preventing me from doing my duty. Either you step back, or I will be forced to take you into custody. It seems I am powerless against British conscientiousness. I can't even tell him why I'm here. I need a different plan. Was never much of a gardener myself, contrary to British stereotype. A normal rubbish bin. End of story. The policeman's guarding the palace entrance. Good evening, sir. How may I help you, sir? Do you enjoy doing this? I beg your pardon, sir? I mean, standing around here all day in the pouring rain. After serving in London for ten years, the rain doesn't really bother me, sir. Apart from that, it's a great honour to maintain law and order in front of the Governor's Palace. Three cheers for our British civil servant. May I ask you a question? Go ahead, sir. By a hair, the Tong Triad nearly drowned me in the harbour today, and yet there wasn't a police officer for miles. Any particular reason? If the incident occurred, as you say, in the harbour, you will have to file an official complaint to the Office of the Colonial Administration. They're responsible for the Southern District. I am under the direct authority of the Palace Department, and I'm responsible for maintaining law and order on and around these premises. Three cheers for British bureaucracy. Then I won't keep you from your work any longer. Good night, sir. Working again. I'm no great fan of... OK, I'll place the alarm clock in the rubbish bin. Let's see what happens when it goes off. When the alarm goes off, I better not be here. What's that? Who's disturbing the governor's sleep? Well, can you believe that? Why would someone throw away a perfectly good alarm clock? Great. That should distract him from his duties for a while. And now off the lawn as quickly as possible. I see you have everything under control. Yes, sir. Very well. Don't let me disturb you any longer. Good evening, sir. I wonder if I can use this to distract it and lure it away from the rubbish bin. Here, kitty kitty. Catch the ball. Hmm. The cat does seem to be interested in the ball. But only while it's moving. Gus's bellows. He says he uses them to get the dust out of the plane's engine. But I can't say I've ever noticed the difference.
I must be a damn genius. If I tie the measuring tape to the ball, I'll have a lovely, colourful pendulum. Hey, things like this always seem to come in handy. Maybe I can use this to lure it away from the bins. Here, kitty kitty, look what I've got for you. Hmm, the cat seems to be interested in the swinging pendulum, but it just won't budge. It must be afraid of me. That works both ways, I admit. Maybe I can use this to lure it away from the bins. Here, kitty kitty, look. Hmm, that works both. Okay, you little rascal. Let's see if your animal intelligence is any match for my person intelligence. Aha. Take that, nature. I don't want to rummage through the rubbish. And I don't have to, either. As a world-class pilot, I do, of course, have adequate response time to catch a fly one-handed. I prefer not to show off, though. As a world-class pilot, I do, of course, have adequate response time to catch a fly one-handed. I prefer not to show off, though. I don't want to rummage through the rubbish, and I don't have to. Worth a try? I should be able to suck up a few flies. My god, Fenton Paddock, legendary adventurer, pilot extraordinaire, flycatcher. Is that a step down? They don't look very inviting. Fly, my pretties. It's working. The flies are buzzing around the lamp. Hey, what are you doing there? You said you wanted flies. I've got some. And that's supposed to work? Yeah. The flies lure the bats, and you catch one. I don't know. At the least, it'll give you a fighting chance. I'd say I've kept my part of the deal. Hmm. Okay then. Here's your wallet. There wasn't anything valuable in there anyway. Well, I, I was having some financial issues, you know, and... Hey, it's none of your business. Give it to me. Good luck on your bat hunt. Thanks. I think I'll check nothing's missing. What I'm about to say is actually pretty sad. Nothing's missing. Hey, boss. What's up, Gus? She's just about ready. I've stowed your equipment and some provisions. Whatever would I do without you, Gus? Well, keep that in mind next time you fill in my paycheck. Anyway, good luck, boss. You'll need it. Thanks, Gus. So, I guess I'll get going in a couple of minutes if there's nothing else. All right. Take a few days off and enjoy them. If I'm not back in three weeks, then I suppose you'll have to look for a new job. I'm sure it won't come to that. Yes, my safe combination. I really should memorize this thing. If I remember correctly, there should be a photo of you. You'd think I'd know the code, Robert. Hmm, I 
keep the old personnel files in the safe. Hmm. I can... Old private documents and personnel files. There must be a photo of Yen Wang in here somewhere. Hmm. These are the documents and certificates from my days in the army. A newspaper article on the 1932 Harbour Riots. It says, eight dead during riots in Hong Kong Harbour. Chinese dock workers came together on Friday evening in the Victoria Harbour to vent their anger over low wages. A British army unit was dispatched to the harbour to keep the peace. As the situation was about to escalate, the officer in command was ordered to retreat in order to prevent casualties. For reasons unknown, the officer in command did not comply with his orders. The soldiers opened fire and began to shoot randomly into the enraged mob. This incident caused a public outcry and was followed by several other clashes. Thankfully, there were no further casualties. The British government regrets the incident and has relented to the workers' demands. The officer responsible for the bloody conflict has been suspended from his duties for the time being. It is very likely that he will have to face charges of insubordination before a military court. Why on earth did I keep this crap? Here we go. Yen Wang's personnel file, complete with photo. Now, hopefully, Niansu can tell me Yen Wang's current address. It took longer than expected, but I have the photo. Um, what uh, photo are you talking about? The photo of my friend. You told me to bring it. Me? Do I know you, young man? Ah, oh, wait. You're that pilot boy, right? I don't believe it. Are you for real? <laughs> Take it easy, son. You must forgive this old man his jokes. Come along. Show me the photo. I know this man. And do you know where he lives? I said I'd tell you all you wanted to know. He has moved to the Won Moi district. And if I remember correctly, he lives in Wing Hao Street. Finally. Thanks a lot. That was all? Yes, that's all. You have been a great help. Perhaps I can return the favor someday. Hmm. Be seeing you, Paslok. I don't think Shen can help me right now. Right. This must be Yen Wang's place. It's been a while. God knows how he'll react. If Niansu's right, then Wang lives in this building here. If Niansu's right. Let's see if I can find Yen Wang's apartment. This pot is full of cracks. Looks like it'd fall apart if I touched it. This bamboo plant clearly needs water and sunlight. The nameplate reads Yen Wang. It reads, better to light a candle than to curse in the darkness. An old saying that completely misunderstands the appeal of a good curse. A child's bike. It's chained to the wall. 
What sort of a world do we live in where people can't just leave their bikes hanging around without chaining them up to stop people like me stealing them? The door reads, Ming Li. This isn't the right place. The nameplate reads, Jian Zhu. The nameplate reads, Jian Zhu, not Yen Wang. I shouldn't bother these people. The nameplate reads Yen Wang. Okay, this must be the one. Fenton? Kim? Um, I, I didn't think... Why don't you come on in? Uh, thanks. How do you know... Oh. It wasn't easy. A strange old man told me. But first he needed a photo of your uncle, and then he pretended to forget who I was, and... I don't get it. It's a much longer story than it should be. Anyway, I, I know it's been a while, but is Yen here? You don't know? Don't know what? What do you want? Well, I wanted to see your uncle. Why? Are you in interrogations now? I want to talk to him. Why now? Why didn't you come any earlier? He waited for you for so long. Did he? Well, better late than never. Not this time, Fenton. Uncle Wang passed away a few days ago. No. He did. Very suddenly. That can't... I'm so sorry, Kim. What are you sorry about? That you betrayed him and refused to talk to him for over a year? I'm sorry that your uncle passed away, but I never betrayed his trust. No? So what do you call it? What you did was terrible. And the fact that you never told us about it, that we actually had to find out about it from someone else. Don't you call that betrayal? You worked together, you were friends. We were practically family. How did we get you so wrong, Fenton? You hear lies and conjecture. You see words in the paper and you just assume the worst without even talking to me. You call that friendship? My uncle wanted to talk to you, but you just left him standing there. You didn't explain any of it. So we're left with eight Chinese workers shot dead that evening and a missing man. What else were we supposed to believe? You never denied any of it. You'd already made up your minds. Your uncle packed up and left work before I had a chance. Those are just excuses. You knew where we were. You could have come. Either there was nothing to explain, or we just weren't worth the effort. Kim, that's not true. I can't believe you could even think that. You were supposed to know me. You know I'm not capable of... a massacre. I thought I knew you. I also thought we could talk about anything and everything. We... I... I just can't talk about that one thing. Then why are you here? I... I wanted to ask Yen a favour. What kind of favour? For the notes from his expedition to Tibet. That's the only reason? Yes. I see. Why do you need the notes? I... I can't tell you that either. Oh, of course. Who do you think you are, Fenton Paddock? You should leave now. Kim, please. These maps are extremely important to me. Oh, really? Then tell me why. If you expect me to trust you, then you'll have to trust me too. Otherwise, get out of my sight. Kim, I don't want to drag you into this. Hello, honey. Ho oh, ho. Looks like I disturbed your little rendezvous. Honey? Who are you calling honey? Shut up and listen, girl. I want the maps. The ones Wang sketched on his way through Tibet. Which maps? My uncle never went to Tibet. Stop wasting my time, girl, or I will lose my temper. I want every single note he brought back from Tibet. And hurry up, or I will have to motivate you. Come on, hand them over! <laughs> You okay? What does it look like? Who is that? Mun Tong. A triad boss. Here, take his pistol and keep an eye on him. I'll go look around outside. His crew are rarely far away. Hmm. Looks like Tong's got his men covering the front door. Like I thought. Two of them outside the door. Why is everyone suddenly so interested in those maps? What do you mean? But just before my uncle passed away, Richard showed up here, then you, and now those men. I want to know what's going on here. Richard? Did Yen show him the maps? Yes. 
That was about three weeks ago. And? Did Richard take the maps with him? No. Uncle Wang made copies for him. So the originals are still here? Yes. Uncle made me promise to keep them safe. OK, look, I'll explain everything later. But we need to get out of here, quickly. These guys aren't going to give up. What is so special about the maps? No idea. And you expect me to believe that? No, I expect you to trust me. You'll explain everything? Yes, I promise. OK. Last chance, Paddock. Thanks, Kimmy. Don't push it. Now what? We have to get out of the house. Is there a back door? I don't think so. I've only been here a couple of times, though. OK, don't worry. I'll come up with something. We'll be out of here in a jiffy. They're weeks out of date. Anyway, I'm not here to read the paper. A simple hanger. Kim's got the maps I need. No point rooting through anything else. No goal is too high. You're just standing too far below. Do not worry about the past. Concentrate on the future. Perhaps I should take that to heart. We certainly did a number on him. When he wakes up, he'll either have forgotten all about us, or be really, really pissed off. I'm guessing the latter. We've got his weapon. Kim can keep him at bay with it. I could give him a kicking, but I think he'll be angry enough as is. I don't see anything that might help us escape. If something's easy to do, it's probably not worth doing. I have to be careful. They mustn't see me. The hanger fits exactly into the hollow of the bamboo pole. The hanger's stuck into the bamboo pole. That should work, but I still have to be careful. A candlelit lantern. The hangers stuck into the bamboo pole. Somewhat unpleasant fellows, and pushy too. They seem to be following me tonight. There's no point in talking to them. I found that out the hard way. Or I could just blow it out myself, but why would I want to do that? Lantern, lantern, burning bright. In the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could kill thy scary, rectangular... Yes, I forget the rest. Long story short, it's staying lit. The hangers stuck into the bamboo pole.
Kim. Yes? I don't suppose you've remembered another way out yet? No, not since you last asked me. Don't worry. I'll find a way out. Okay, hurry. They've got to realize something's up soon. There's no point in talking to them. I found that out the hard way. I don't want to put anyone else at risk. Kim and I can make it on our own. What sort of a world do we live in where people can't just leave their bikes hanging around without chaining them up to stop people like me stealing them? This pot is full of cracks. Looks like it'd fall apart if I touched it. Candlelit lantern. Looks like it'd fall apart if I touched it. got his weapon. Kim can keep him at bay with it. I could give him a kicking, but I think he'd be angry enough as is. It's Kim, Yen Wang's niece. We spent a lot of time together. She sure has grown up. Kim's got the maps I need. No point rooting through anything else. The hangers stuck into the bamboo pole. The hangers stuck. The hangers stuck into the bamboo pole. There's no point in talking to them. It's some pushy too. They seem to be following me tonight. Somewhat unpleasant fellow. Nope, nothing. Thug's car. The 
thug's car. If something's easy to do, it's probably not worth doing. The hangers stuck into the bamboo pole. Hey, there's a window. This stuff isn't much help either. If my sense of direction isn't completely off, this window should lead to the alley next to the house. I'm no psychologist, but I doubt Kim would be impressed if I left her here. Tempting, all the same. Kim, there's a window out there in the hallway. Let's get out of here. Finally. He's probably going to wake up at any moment. This is taking forever. Boss should have been back ages ago. Should I go see what's keeping him? Nah, the boss said we should wait here and orders are orders. Why'd it take so long, boss? <laughs> Did you stay for a cup of tea or something? Shut up. The girl wasn't alone. That guy Paddock was there too. They're gone. The maps too. Paddock? I thought he was at the bottom of the harbor. You thought wrong. They cannot be far. Tell the others and start a search. This time, I will watch him die. Hey, wait. Let me check if it's safe. And what's the grand plan now? We have to get to the airport. We'll be safe at my office for a while. I'll explain everything when we get there. Over here! We found them! Damn! Kim, the truck's running. Jump in and step on it. I'll cover you. What about you? Drive! I'll jump in the back! They're taking the truck! I can see that myself. Get the car.
Joy tailgating us. However, I'm sure they have short attention spans. Better get back on the truck. I can't reach it like that. I can't reach it like that. The hangar's stuck to the bamboo pole. not strong enough to hold myself up with it. She's an excellent driver. For a woman. Kim! Yeah? Drive faster! Okay! Let's see what she can do. up. This thing's gonna fall apart if I push it any harder. Kim! Yeah? Hit the brakes! Are you crazy? Do you want those guys to run you over? He's got a point. She's an excellent driver. For a woman. Kim! Yeah? Full throttle, Kim! Okay, hang on! I can't reach it. Catching up! This thing's gonna fall apart! She's an excellent driver. For a woman. Kim! Yeah? Drive faster! Okay! Let's see what she can do. Kim! The brakes! Okay, whatever you say. Everything okay? Yeah! Hurry up! Kim, we can't leave these guys to the airport. We've got to lose them. But I know! Suggestions? Stay on this road. I'll get rid of them. That piece of glass is the windshield on the ship. The glass is too far away. I don't want to get shot trying to reach it. I think I could use that to pull the piece of glass away. Somehow in this game, we shot the bamboo clean in half. The glass is too far away. I really don't need to get shot trying to reach it. Fireworks quick. Well, it's still long enough to try again.
It's a cigar. I don't smoke. There's a key hanging here. Explosives. So this might work. I need to find some way to aim at the cargo. It's a tight fit, but it's a good one. The rocket's not roughly on top, which is far better enough. I shouldn't mess around with them now. Our corner is tied down. Come pull it away. An old engine. Two of the exhausts. And so it's an eight cylinder. of action in an enclosed space, but as far as Paddock's concerned, fire makes any situation more exciting. Idiot, can't you see that they are getting away? What are you waiting for? Put your foot down! The engine's dead, boss. Oh, no. Hmm? Oh, damn it. Well, we lost them for now, but they won't be far behind. Then you haven't got long to fill me in, have you? What's going on? You have to leave Hong Kong, Kim. The Tong Triad wants your uncle's notes, and they're not known for asking nicely. What do they want them for? I don't know. Yet. But you have to trust me. Trust you? And how am I supposed to do that? You disappear for over a year and then turn up on my doorstep like nothing's changed. Kim, forget about that for five seconds. You're not safe here. And where do you suggest I go? I haven't learned to disappear into thin air since we last met. Don't worry. My plane's fueled up and ready. We can leave straight away. In your plane? 
And just where do you suggest we go? Well, I have some things to take care of in Tibet. You could come with me. You're out of your mind. Until you tell me what's going on, I'm staying right here. We don't have time for this. Come with me and I'll explain on the way. I can't come with you. What am I supposed to do in Tibet? Damn it, they're on their way here right now. Kimmy, either you get into the plane voluntarily or I'm going to bundle you into the cargo hold. But it's ice cold in there. I don't even have any stuff. Sweater, makeup, toothbrush. I've got stuff. Have it all if you like. Well, I'll have a sweater. You can keep your toothbrush. Whatever. Get moving. So, Fenton, I suppose we're safe now? Uh, yes. Yes, I'd say we are. Good. Time to tell me your side of the story. Okay, okay. What do you want to know? Where should I start? Was it your fault that the dock workers died? I was officer in command that evening. The situation was getting out of hand. The workers got violent, throwing things. That's why we wanted to pull out. Nobody was supposed to get hurt. I was about to get everyone withdrawn when Richard went down. A few of the dock workers dived on him. It was a split-second decision. I stayed, ran over to Richard. God knows what they would have done to him. Then things really got out of hand. Part of my unit followed me, and I suppose the workers thought we wanted to break them up. So they attacked us. What happened next? One of my men opened fire. You get bad orders, you lose your nerve. It happens. Everyone started shooting into the crowd. I tried to call a ceasefire. Eight people died before I did. I... I should have left Richard behind. What? One life versus eight. Easy maths. You can't weigh one life against another. It's not how it works. How kind of you. So now you're on my side. It was my job to know things might get out of hand. I had an order and I ignored it. We were explicitly told to withdraw to prevent people getting killed. Fenton, that is so... I don't know. If you hadn't been there to help Richard, he would have been killed and... I know, Kim, and I don't regret having saved Richard's life. But I'm not proud of what I did. Those eight men, their families, that day is burnt into the back of my mind. You mean being discharged from the army? Yes, among other things. But if all that's true, then it was just an accident. Didn't it count for anything that you saved the life of the governor's son? Richard was supposed to be kept out of it all. You never know what people might start saying if they knew he was there. Richard pulled all the strings he could to keep me out of prison. I owe him everything. Other people wanted to see my head roll afterwards. The Empire had to find a way to appease the Chinese population, so the person responsible was dishonorably discharged from His Majesty's service. And I accept that decision. In spite of the circumstances, I had a job to do and I failed. Richard and his unit were deployed in northern India soon after. We've hardly seen each other since. Fenton. Yes? Why didn't you tell us about all this? Did you really think we wouldn't believe you? Who knows? But... The men who were shot were your people. I guess I figured it would change things between us. You could have trusted us. My uncle missed you. And? Oh, nothing. So, why don't you tell me what we're doing in Tibet? Curiosity killed the cat, you know. Well, we've cheated death several times in the last few hours, so I reckon we're on a roll. Anyway, you promised you'd tell me. Okay, okay. Richard needs my help again. The irony of fate. He disappeared on an expedition. No trace of him or his men for weeks. But it's all top secret. So Lord Weston asked me to go after him. Unofficially. He knows I'd do anything for Richard. And? What does all that have to do with my uncle's maps? Obviously Richard used them to plan his route. That's why I'm hoping the maps will help me find him. And the Triads? Are they looking for Richard too? I don't think so. But it can't be coincidence. So, what do you want to do next? Well, we're almost there. I'll drop you off in Katang before I start. You'll find a few decent hostels there. I guess I'll be gone two or three weeks. Once winter hits, I won't be able to cross the mountains. 
if I haven't found Richard by then. Wait, wait, wait. Did I miss something? You're dropping me off in Pawang? Katang. Whatever, I'm not going. I'm not gonna wait in some dump in the middle of nowhere for you to ride in on your high horse and rescue me a month down the line. Fine. What do you suggest? You're not coming with me. To say you're unprepared would be an understatement. But that's not what I was saying. I just don't want to be left behind in some mountain village. There must be some larger city en route, right? No, we're talking about Tibet. The only other option would be Lhasa, but that's too far out of the way. You're staying in Katang until I get back. I'm sorry. Maybe you didn't notice, but it's been quite a while since we last saw each other. I'm not a little girl anymore. And you can't push me around like you used to. I'm sorry, Kim. I just don't want to drag you into all this any further. The last time I tried to help Richard, things didn't go too well. I don't want that to happen again. You understand? Really, it's better this way. Great! And what am I supposed to do while you're gone? Yak herding? Every little girl's dream. What if something happens to you? I'll be stuck there forever. Or at least until some other thoughtless gung-ho pilot accidentally strays this way and picks me up. Kim Duck! Damn it! Um, did he just shoot at us? A German fighter plane? He just shot at us! I can't believe it! What's he doing in Tibet? I couldn't care less! He shot at us! He actually just shot at us! Shoot back! What? You know, shoot back! Machine guns, cannons... Uh, I deliver sacks of rice to Kathmandu for a living. This is a cargo plane, not a war machine, and therefore, no, it does not have any weapons on board. You're telling me we have no way of defending ourselves? I didn't say that. Take the controls. I'm going to the back to take care of our little friend. Okay, Fenton, think. Think of a plan. Plan, plan, plan. This canister contains distilled water for the hydraulic system. These pumpkins were going to Shanghai, but maybe I can get a better price here. Even if they are so old they're hollow. That's capitalism, baby. Pilot's best friend. That's not that one, I've only got the one. The 
parachute was attached to this bolt. It screwed in tight. Flower? Thanks, Gus. Only one parachute. But at least if we find some milk, yeast and eggs, we can whip up a tasty loaf. but I'm not going to. If the pumpkin had an opening to pour the flour into, it would work, but it doesn't, so it won't. We've got some holes in this baby now. Okay, I can pour some flour through the holes. Oh no! He hit the starboard engine! Don't panic! I'll switch it off and try to stabilize us. You can fly with one engine? This baby's got three! Which means we've got two left! But don't worry! I'm an expert at emergency landings! Crap! I've never tried it with only one wing before! There's a field over there! I'm taking us down! Hold on tight! Fenton! Better be important, Lieutenant. Indeed. Our contact in Hong Kong has reported back. Continue. It looks like the cartographer's records have disappeared. What do you mean? Disappeared to where? And what about the cartographer? He died just recently. Only a few days after passing on copies of his maps to the British recon unit. And the originals? Someone must have them. The men we've assigned to the job assume the originals are in the hands of the cartographer's niece. Unfortunately, they were not able to reach the girl because a former soldier is protecting her. Better and better. If you want something done, do it yourself. In any event, the girl and the soldier were able to escape. I am somewhat disappointed, Lieutenant. But very well. We will continue reasonably. 
Who is this soldier? Why might he need the maps? What kind of threat is he to us? Collect all the information you can on him and the girl. I will be flying to Berlin for a week. I expect answers when I return. Jawohl. Anything else, Lieutenant? One of our recon aircraft is missing. It was on routine surveillance this morning and hasn't returned. I suggest sending out a search unit. Yes, do so. If the machine has crashed, you must find the pilot as well as the aircraft. Get rid of any traces that might lead to our camp. It will mean the majority of the men being sent out. Yes. I emphasize once again. Find the crashed aircraft and eliminate all tracks leading to us. Our mission must remain confidential at all costs until we have opened the chamber in the monastery. After that, we will not need to hide from anyone ever again. What happened? Kim? Kimmy? Can you hear me? Kim, please say something! Damn it. I need to get up there fast.
That sled was in my plane. I use it during the winter to unload cargo, 